Good afternoon, <coughs> and welcome to the second of two videos on uh, human population and our effects on the world around us. Um, this, by the way, is also the very last video of the course. <laughs> Say hallelujah and sing amen. All right, but uh, this is the last. All right, so in any event, what I want to talk about in this video is uh, the loss of biodiversity. Um, human impact on the world around us can uh, alter the biodiversity that we see in the world. And biodiversity is simply defined as the variety of life on the planet Earth. Now, um, <clears throat> why is this a a big deal who cares right you know so there are a few uh fewer species of insects uh there are, you know a eh, couple of birds go extinct all right well the reason is that <clears throat> every organism on the planet is interconnected and humans are part of that interconnection when we do certain things like pollute the environment or exploit natural resources we are changing the uh, biochemical and the biological interactions that exist on planet Earth. <clears throat> and this can lead to a loss in biodiversity. Now, some examples of this and some causes of the loss of biodiversity include habitat loss. Um, the In today's day and age, two of the biggest impacted areas are coral reefs and uh, rainforests on, on uh, terrestrial ecosystems. And these are a particular concern because they have very high species diversity. So, you know, if a coral reef is destroyed, that means that not only are you losing one species, but you're losing a multitude of species. And the same thing is true in rainforests. A lot of attention has been uh, given lately to uh, invasive species, uh, species that don't uh, exist naturally in a certain habitat, but have been either imported by humans or uh, transported by human activities to a new area. <coughs> and the difficulty with alien species is that very often they have no predators. Uh, or nothing that that eats them, and so uh, they grow unchecked. And what that can do is they can then outcompete the the naturally existing species, and that certainly changes the landscape uh, of the habitat around you. Pollution, of course, results in a variety of problems: uh, acid deposition, global warming, ozone depletion, um, synthetic organic compounds. Um, including uh, endocrine disrupting contaminants, endocrine be being hormones, all right? And so, um, you know, certain synthetic or, uh, compounds that are produced uh, can change the hormonal uh, uh, makeup of other organisms, including human beings. Overexploitation occurs when uh, humans extract enough individuals from a, a wild population that it becomes seriously reduced in numbers. This includes things like uh, exotic pets. Um, the the uh, parrots shown in the slide on the right are are overexploited. Uh, hunting, in in some cases, uh, is an overexploitation. In some areas of the world, you may know the story of the. Uh, the passenger pigeon, or the, or even the buffalo in the American Plains. All right, now I'm not saying hunting is a bad thing. As a matter of fact, um, the population of white-tailed deer in North America is higher now than it was before the English began the colonization of North America. All right, and so um, hunt, and the reason for that is that we've killed all their predators. There's no wolves and mountain lions and things like that in New York anymore. And so the population of white-tailed deer is exploding. All right, and actually, we need to hunt them more uh, in order to bring down their numbers. But over-exploitation can be dangerous. And finally, disease uh, can be caused um, because uh, human beings have changed landscapes. And so uh, pathogens that were once not um, able to connect with humans now do. And so... Uh, but the loss of biodiversity can cause a whole host 
uh, problems for us. Now, again, you know, you, you might say, who cares, you know, <clears throat> what's, what's the big deal? Well, there's a couple of, of advantages to um, having a diverse ecosystem, a naturally occurring diverse ecosystem. Uh, many of the medicines that we have uh, developed over the course of the last century or two are derived from living organisms. Um, there are examples in your textbook on the rosy periwinkle um, and uh, the production of antibiotics. Right? The first uh, penicillin was discovered in a, in a mold, a, a type of fungus. All right? And so these are um, things that we uh, derived by learning about naturally occurring systems. Of course, there is agricultural value to biodiversity. All right? We can um, create food and fibers, right? cotton fibers, from agricultural crops. Um, there are also biological pest controls. Um, for example, um, ladybugs eat aphids. All right. Um, you know, if you have aphids on your, in your flower garden, you want ladybugs to come by and, and start eating those, uh, aphids rather than having to spray your flowers with pesticides. Uh, pollination by bees and bats and other organisms uh, is also quite helpful, especially for uh, farmers who re who rely on that, like uh, apple or, uh, orchard owners. Uh, they, they need uh, nests of bees to pollinate all the flowers and the apple trees in order to get the fruit in the fall. Um, there's also the consumptive value, all right? Um, we eat a lot of fish in, uh, in the world. Um, freshwater and marine harvests depend on wild caught animals, all right? And so you're, you're, um, you know, using the natural resources. If we, if we over exploit them, then that's going to be a problem because there aren't going to be any more. Um, rubber in, in the picture on the lower right hand corner, uh, that is a rubber tree. And so, uh, what that guy's doing is he's cutting into the bark and uh, extracting the gum, uh, which is kind of like the uh, sap of the tree, uh, and and we produce rubber from that. And so, you know, having a, a diverse ecosystem around us has a, a lot of value for us. And so we should do what we can to maintain that biodiversity. The indirect bi value of biodiversity uh, is also important. Um, you know, our wastes, especially our organic wastes, are broken down by decomposers, bacteria and fungi and things like that. Uh, and what they do is they take that organic matter, your feces and, and whatnot, and they break it down into its inorganic nutrients. Um, they can also be used to break down and um, destroy pollutants. Um, there's a species of bacteria that's been genetically modified to go uh, to, to float in salt water and break up um, uh, oil slicks. All right, and so if there's a leak on an oil tanker or a um, uh, an oil rig, a, you know, a pumping rig, um, you know, and that leak is floating along on the ocean. Um, they literally drop these little packets of these bacteria and they uh, eat the oil. They literally digest the oil. Um, you know, keeping plants on beaches prevents soil erosion. Even, even plants on just on hills uh, can prevent landslides and mudslides and things like that. Um, keeping a diverse ecosystem uh, contributes to the biogeochemical cycles, the, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and so on. Um, forests help to uh, keep or pull carbon dioxide out of the air. So the more trees that are growing, the more carbon is actually stored in that living tree as opposed to being free in the atmosphere. All right. And so there's a great amount of indirect value to having uh, a great deal of biodiversity. Now, the, there are certain aspects of life on earth that are completely unsustainable. Um, the population in the uh, less developed countries is huge, all right? And so the population is just growing uh, at an exponential rate. Consumption in the more developed countries is huge, all right? And so uh, the population is growing and we're using more stuff, 
All right. And this is all an issue. Uh, agriculture, growing crops and, and livestock uses a great deal of, of land. It uses water, it uses fossil fuels, and it produces pollution. Um, and uh, believe it or not, almost half of what we plant in the ground as crops is actually used to feed our livestock. All right? And so, you know, it, it's, a, uh, it's a give and take there, a cost and a benefit. It takes about 10 pounds of grain to produce about one pound of meat, and therefore uh, the overeating of meat in uh, more developed countries is wasteful. Now, this is not to say that meat is not a necessary part of our diet, because it is, all right? Um, you know, but eating, um, you know, a, uh, a pound uh, of hamburger in one sitting is ridiculous. Um, there's no reason for anyone to eat that way. Uh, first of all, you're going to make yourself obese and probably sick. Um, but secondly, that you don't need it for um, for your life. So think about you know how much you're eating and how much food you waste. Um, we currently use mostly non-renewable forms of energy, um, like the fossil fuels, and that leads to things like acid de uh, deposition, possibly global warming, and smog. Um, and of course, as our population grows, we are um, taking habitat away from other organisms, and that can lead to uh, the extinction of those other species. Um, this is a, a, a quick picture of some of the things that are going on around the world that is, uh, that are, that's bad, that's dangerous. Deforestation, uh, can, which can also lead to desert desertification, uh, the erosion of topsoil, the depletion of groundwater, uh, urban sprawl, uh, with the, especially with the buildup of the, of the suburbs uh, in the last century or so, uh, leads to habitat life, uh, loss for um, the natural populations. Uh, air pollution, water pollution, global warming, um, the use of uh, fertilizers, pesticides, and hazardous wastes um, which can uh, lead to eutrophication of plants, uh, I'm sorry, of ponds and uh, lakes, uh, overfishing and the loss of terrestrial habitat. So all of these things are unsustainable. We have to slow them down and eventually stop them and be able to um, reverse some of the ill effects that we've caused uh, over the last uh, few hundred years. Now, in rural areas, there are things that can be done. All right. Uh, you can plant a variety of crops uh, and trees, and this will help to return nutrients to the soil. Uh, you can use farming techniques that promote healthy soil and decrease destruction and pollution. You can use integrated pest management. Rather than using chemicals, you can perhaps find a biological um, way to manage any uh, insect pests. We can preserve and restore wetlands. Um, we can restore uh, use recycled uh, materials as much as possible, and we can compost. Um, we can use renewable energy um, in, in certain forms, such as wind and biofuel, which is um, uh, combustible fuel produced uh, typically by algae or bacteria. And uh, if you buy locally, then those products don't have to be shipped far, far away. Although, you know, sometimes you need things that are produced far, far away. In urban areas, uh, we can def design uh, energy efficient um, mass transit uh, systems, um, subways and, and things like that, um, that can carry a large number of people uh, without using a great deal of energy. We can heat and cool buildings using uh, efficient means. We can create uh, green roofs, meaning plant a gra uh, garden on your uh, on the rooftop of an apartment building in a big city. Um, you know, use parklands, um, you know, or or leave parklands as cities are being developed. Um, plant native plants, including grasses, that attract butterflies and bees, pollinators. In other words. Um, and recycle business equipment, your old computer, your old cell phone, and that sort of thing. The minerals that are found in there, silver, gold, copper, and others, um, can be recycled. Um, you know, or if we don't recycle them, then we have to dig deeper into the ground to find more of them. 
Now, in t to talk a little bit about uh, politics here in assessing the quality of life. The gross national product is uh, a measure of the money flow, but it does not take into account uh, the environment. All right. So a company's, uh, a, I'm sorry, a country's uh, gross national product is the amount of essentially profit that they take uh, take in over expenditures. Um, and but it doesn't matter whether they're doing this in an ecologically sound way or not. Um, and so better indicators, at least for the environment, uh, include non-economic indicators like um, the indexes of sustainable economic welfare or the genuine progress indicators. Now, you can look these up on uh, the Internet and figure out exactly how the calculations are done. But essentially what they um, they use um, natural resources as currency as opposed to uh, dollars as a currency. However. People don't like to sacrifice their comfort levels, all right? Um, you know, so we continue to exploit our environment and its resources, all right? Is that a bad thing? You know, no, all right? I'm sitting in my house and I've got the air conditioner on and and I'm happy for it. You know, I don't want to be uh, have the inside of my house to be 97 degrees on a summer day. I'd rather have it, you know, in the 70s, which is much nicer, much more comfortable. Um, <clears throat> however, we do need to consider the, the things that we do as individuals that can have an impact on our uh, environment, all right? And so, you know, educate yourself. I've been saying this all semester. You know, learn about the issues. Learn about the truth of the issues. Don't listen to politicians of either party, for that matter. Um, talk about, you know, tell you what you should do in terms of science, all right? Do your own homework research the the issues themselves and make a decision on your own about what you can do um, to make the world a better place that my friends is the end of our last video and i hope that over the course of of this chapter and for the whole course that you learn something